Hello, my beautiful computer science students. Welcome to our very first lesson in AP Computer Science A. And we are going to start right away with Unit 1, Primitive Types. And in this unit, our first lesson is called Welcome to Java, where we are going to be introduced to our first computer program. And just talk about some of the things that go into that computer program and working with Java. So let's dive right in. Okay, Right on the screen here, I have our very first Java program and the code that goes with it. And you can see that there's quite a few things that go into making our first program work. And I'm going to talk about all of these things. So what you're looking at, we call that Java source code. Okay? And that's what you're actually going to be coding in. <laughs> and the line numbers off to the left there, you see it starts with one, and then a colon, two, and then a colon. Those are for reference. And in your integrated development environment, your IDE, that is automatically going to appear. You are going to be typing the words off to the right there of those number lines. This code prints off a very simple welcome message to the screen. And it says, welcome to APCSA. And you can see that message right here, enclosed in parentheses. Now, or excuse me, parentheses and quotation marks. So we needed all of that other code there in order to print this message to the council. And when we talk about the council, council refers to what is printed on the screen when the program is run. So throughout the notes, whenever you see that word council off to the side, I'm just talking about what is actually printed to the screen when your program is run. So let's get into all of this other stuff that needs to happen in your program and what it is in order to print our first simple message. Okay. Now, what you'll see, and I actually put this in here just so you can see what it will look like in an IDE. Again, your development environment is where you're actually going to be writing your source code. So you'll see off to the left there that same program, but now it's in color. And most integrated development environments, again, IDE for short, most of them have some sort of system that highlights specific words um, for different reasons. So we'll talk about what the blue words mean and what those um, almost red words mean. And then the council is actually just going to be right now just a black box that appears and prints off whatever your program wants to print off. So that's what it's going to look like for you. Okay. So let's go back to the text version and talk about what each of these pieces mean. On the first line of code, you see what's called a class declaration. So line one defines a class, okay, what we call a class. Every single Java program must have at least one class. You need a class in order to run your program. Some programs might have multiple classes and you know we're already going to get there later in unit two. So some programs have multiple classes. Right now we're just going to be working with one class. Each class has its own unique name and by convention we start that name with an uppercase letter. So our classes always start with the keyword public and again, a lot of these keywords we're going to be talking about a little bit more later on exactly what they mean. For right now, just know that you need these words in your program in order to run correctly. Okay, So you start it with public, then you write the word class, and then example is an example of a class name. So our class name here is going to be example. After that, you see that we have this open curly bracket. We call it an open curly bracket. And that means that that starts the block of the class. Okay. On line six, you see a closed curly bracket. Okay. So that open and closed curly bracket actually goes together. And it says everything that's there between those two brackets, open to close, is going to be part of your class. You'll know that because we line up that closed bracket with the start of our class. 
Okay, and that's going to be a convention we're going to talk about a little bit later on in the lesson, okay? where we want to make sure that our blocks are aligned so that anyone reading our code, including us, understand what that block is, um, is defining. Okay? So you'll see we have public class example. That's going to be our class. That's going to be our first block. Line two, okay? you notice it's indented over. Right, indented over and it defines what's called the main method. Now there's a lot of words in this main method. Okay? For right now, again, just accept all the words and know that you need them to run your program. Okay, We're going to talk about what each of those parts mean throughout the course. So you'll know what they all mean by the end. Okay, by the end of the course, not necessarily the end of the lesson, but by the end of the course you'll know what they mean. For now, just um, just work with it. Okay. Now this is called the main method. There's three words that come in front of main. You'll notice you have what's called public, static, void. All three of those are key words that need to be there before you define your main method. Main being a lowercase m. Okay. Public, static, void, and then main is the name of the method. After the method, you see we have parentheses and we have this jumble of um, of symbols here. We have string, open closed brackets, and then something called args. Okay. Now we'll define all of that later. Just have them in your program for right now. There's only one main method per program, um, but your program can have multiple methods. Okay. They just can't be called main. There's only one main method. Um, and then the keywords that I mentioned, public static void, and then string with those brackets, and then args, all of those just should be a part of your main method signature, okay? what we call your signature there for your main method. So again, just accept all of those words for right now and know that they have to be there to be a part of your program. Okay, on line three, again, you notice it's indented over in the main um, in the main block, okay, and I say the main block because you notice the open and close curly brackets again, define the main method block, okay. Just like our class had a block with the open and closed, so does our main method right in there. Inside that block, we have a comment, okay. It's a comment um, designed to help your programmers who read your code or just you in general um, communicate and understand your, your own program, right? So the comment starts with two slashes and everything after the two slashes is called a line comment. And that line comment, everything after those two slashes is just purely for the programmer. It will not do anything to the council. It will not affect anything on your, um, your code at all, okay? It is just for you as the programmer, okay? It's, the program skips over that line, basically, is what you can think of. It. There's also a comment called a block comment, okay? And a block comment is enclosed between two special symbols that I have here, slash, asterisk, and then asterisk slash. Okay. And we use block comments when we need to communicate something that's going to span several lines. Okay. My line here on line number three just says displays to the screen. So I'm just making a comment in this program that the line that comes next is just going to display to the screen. And it, I could take care of that in one line. But sometimes with more um, advanced code, you want to have several lines and almost write a couple sentences describing what you're doing. And that's what a block comment is going to be there for. Here's an example of a block comment being used. Okay. So you'll see I have still um, lines one and two, class, and my main method. And then lines three through five, I have a block comment. And your code is going to ignore everything between those two special symbols. Okay? That is just a message for the coder. And your program is actually not going to run that at all. Okay? It ignores any sort of comments. Comments are just for the coder. Okay? And they're not required in a program at all. So I include them here just to show you what they are, but you do not need them in a program at all to run correctly. Okay? Not required, but very useful. Line excuse me, line four is called a statement. Okay. So you'll notice that also is indented in the main method there. 
and it does something. Statements do something. This statement uses a specific type of code called system dot out dot print and then you see this ln that's an l and then an n um, we pronounce that line okay because we actually use this code a lot to print to the council so this is called system dot out dot print line is how we pronounce that and it's used to display what's called a string literal a string literal is a sequence of characters that are enclosed in parentheses. So notice that what's displayed to the council up here, welcome to APCSA with an exclamation mark, that was enclosed in parentheses or right here. Okay. Or excuse me, quotation marks. <laughs> not. Parentheses are part of the method um, print line. So you'll see parenthes open parenthesis here, close parenthesis here, and then you'll see those two quotation marks. And what this method does, what this command does, is says, okay, you're gonna print everything between those quotation marks to the screen exactly as it's written. Okay, and then you'll notice at the end of our statement, we have a semicolon. Every statement in Java is going to end in a semicolon. Okay. Not every line, okay, so be careful of that. It's not every line, okay. We didn't have any other um, semicolons throughout the code. Every statement in Java ends with a semicolon. Okay. All right, let's talk about some of those special characters we saw. Okay. First up, we have those open and closed braces. Um, and I told you they form what's called a block. Every block begins with an open brace and ends with a closed brace. Okay? And in the example we just did, we had a class block and a method block. Okay? So when you start writing programs with multiple classes and multiple methods, those curly brackets are going to define your block. Okay? And then we have um, the brackets. Okay? So we call them braces and then brackets. So notice the difference. Curly braces um, or curly brackets, some people call them. But then we have the open and closed brackets, okay, which are the straight ones. And we saw them in our code. These actually denote something called an array, which for us in this course is going to be talked about in unit six. So the only time you're going to use those right now is in that main method signature after the word string. Um, otherwise, you're not going to use them at all until we get to unit six. Then we have open and closed parentheses. Okay? And they have multiple uses in a program. You'll actually use them kind of throughout programming. Um, in our example we just did, they were used with certain types of methods. So they were used with our main method, and then they were used with our command method, where we wanted to command the program to print something to the council. Okay? So we use them for multiple purposes throughout our program, but that's an example of how we did it. The double slash was a line comment. Okay? Everything on the line after the double slashes, slashes is ignored by the program. Okay? And you can only see them from the programmer's perspective. Those quotation marks enclose a string literal. And the semicolon marks the end of a statement. Okay. So all of these build into what we call syntax rules. Okay? And syntax rules um, are when you have to write code that conforms to special characters and formats. Okay? You have to write your code in a way that the computer can understand and execute that code. And the way you write it is called syntax, and you have to conform to the rules. If you violate a syntax rule, you'll get what's called a compiler error. And we'll talk a little bit more about what a compiler is in a moment. But if you violate a syntax rule, you get a compiler error. And a compiler error means that the compiler cannot translate your source code into what's called machine language. Okay. Now, I'll talk about the compiler and the machine in a moment. I want to just first show you an example of an IDE and show you what a compiler error looks like. So in our class, we use Replit. And in other classes, you might use different IDEs, but this is kind of what it's going to look like. Okay. Now in Replit, let me get rid of some of this stuff here. Okay. In Replit, um, this is unique to Replit. Whatever class has the main method, you have to call 
Maine with a capital M as your class. Okay? And that's just a weird replit thing due to the fact that it's a browser integrated development environment. Um, if you're using something else um, like Eclipse or Blue Jay or any of those other IDEs, you can usually name your class that has the main method anything you want. Okay, that's just a weird thing. But notice how this is the exact same program. Welcome to APCSA. I just don't have the um, I don't have the comment in there. Okay, so when I run this and I click the word run, it might take a moment depending on your browser. But then you'll get your comment. Okay, all of this is just commands that happened before. This is what actually is printed to the screen. Welcome to APCSA. Okay. Now a compiler error. Let's say I leave off a semicolon. Okay. You'll notice my IDE is trying to tell me with that little underline there, like, hey, you're leaving something off, <laughs> right? You see that little uh, thing there. It might even actually pop up with a note, syntax error. But let's say I went ahead and tried to run this and I didn't catch that error, I didn't see it. What you'll see printed off is a syntax uh, compiler error message. It says in main.java, which is the file name, main.java, on line three, there's an error where your semicolon is, in, is expected. And they even show you the statement, and then they make this little caret symbol pointing to where you need your semicolon, right? So that's a syntax error. And notice how it didn't print off my message. It didn't say welcome to APCSA because it couldn't. The syntax rules were violated. Okay. Now, sometimes, like in that case, your error message was really helpful. That's not always the case. Let me show you an example. Like system here has a capital S. Let's say I use a lowercase s. Okay. Again, you see the... Um, in my IDE here, it underlines it like something's wrong, like a mistake. Let's say I didn't catch that and I tried to run that instead. What kind of error message would appear? Well, again, it's pointing to line three and it says package system does not exist. Okay. Now, you don't know what a package is yet, right? We haven't talked about packages in our first lesson. And you'll notice it prints off the line, but now it's pointing to this, um, it's pointing to the period. Okay, which the period isn't the issue. The issue is that this needs to be a capital S. Okay, so sometimes be careful of the error messages that show up on your um, on your screen. They might alert you to the line that your error is in, but they might not be super helpful. Okay, so just know that as we as we move forward here. Okay, okay, let's switch back to our notes here. And let's talk a little bit about what I mean by compile. So when you write a program, and this is just a very basic <laughs> explanation of it, you write your source code. Okay? You're going to be writing source code using those syntax rules. Once you write your source code, you then perform a step called compile. And to compile means you're going to translate that source code that you wrote into machine code. Okay? And there's a few other things that happen behind the scenes. But basically, you can think of your source code getting translated into something the computer can read. So that would be binary. Right? Computers can only read binary. So through a series of steps, your source code gets translated essentially down into binary code. Okay? You just don't see that part. That's called compile. If your program compiles fine and there's no syntax errors, then you can run your Java program. Okay. Now, in the steps I just did on Replit, what you saw, and I'll pull it up again so you can see, I just had this run button. Okay. And that's all I did was click run. And you notice it took a little bit, but then it eventually ran the program. Okay. That's because on Replit specifically, um, this run button does two things. First, it compiles your program and checks for those syntax errors. And if there's no syntax errors, then it'll run your program. Okay. And that's sometimes why it takes a little bit longer to actually run your program, especially longer programs, um, is because it compiles everything first. And once it compiles fine, then it goes through and runs it. Okay. So. Keep that in mind if you do use Replit. If you use another IDE, chances are you have a compile button and a run button. 
and you'll have to click compile first where it compiles everything and then you'll click your run button and then it'll run everything so just depending on what you're using we talked about how the compiler catches syntax errors. So that's going to be your missing semicolons, brackets, words that are misspelled, words that are misplaced, um, things of that nature is what your compiler will catch. Um, there's another type of error that can happen in your program. Your program might compile fine. All of the syntax might be great. When you run your program, though, you might still have an error. Okay. If your program doesn't run correctly, it compiles fine, but it doesn't run correctly, you have what's called a runtime error. And here's a couple of examples of a runtime error. Um, an infinite loop is a runtime error. Now, what is a loop? That's unit four, okay? So we'll talk about that. Out of bounds is something that happens with arrays and array lists. Again, that's a little bit later on in the course. Um, divide by zero, we will talk about that runtime error in this unit. Um, but there are many runtime errors, okay? many different things that compile fine, but actually when you run your program, they end up not being fine. <laughs> so we'll see some of those. Okay, let's talk about this system.out.println. Okay. So I have a new set of code. I took off the numbers, um, but I have a new piece of code here. Uh, this class is called welcome. Okay. So you'll notice again, public class welcome open bracket, and then I have my main method signature that's exactly the same as I went through earlier, and now I have four statements in my main method, okay? four of them, and all four of them use this system.out.print, um, but there's two different types of prints. There's print line, like we just saw, and then you see just the regular print. Okay. And those are the two different types of commands that are going to print to the council. System.out.print and system.out.println. Okay. And so when I say print line, okay, just to make a note there, when I say print line, that's what I mean. Okay. Print ln. It's an L, not a number one. <laughs> print ln. And the difference between them is a little subtle. The system.out.print prints to the council, and then the cursor waits at the end of the line, okay? Meaning that um, you'll print, and then the cursor that, you know, like if you were typing that blinking cursor, it waits at the end of the line until the next command is given, okay? Now the system.out.println, print line, prints to the council, and then moves to the next line. So it'll print that command, to the screen and then move that cursor to the next line. So let's trace through this program and see what we mean. So this first command, welcome to our class. So welcome to our class period gets printed off to the council. That string literal is printed and then that cursor moves to the next line after it's done. Okay, so you'll see that cursor right there on the council. And then we have the statement print five. Okay. Now notice there's no parentheses. Or it's par I keep saying parentheses. I'm so sorry. Notice there's no quotations around the five. Okay. And that's because five is a number. Okay. It's not a string literal. It could be, but it's not a string literal. So it would Java's just going to print off a five. And because it's the print statement, it's going to print the five, and then the cursor waits at the end of that line. What that means is on the next line, the cursor picks up right where it left off. So it left off at the end of the five, and the next statement, it prints off an equal sign. So it's going to literally print off an equal sign. And then again, that statement is also just a print statement. So that cursor is going to wait there at the end of the line. Okay. And then the final statement, two plus three. Okay. Now, because this expression, 2 plus 3 is not in, in quotation marks. Okay. Oh, excuse me. I meant to say quotation marks here. Okay. Because the expression is not in quotation marks, the program will actually evaluate that math expression and then go ahead and print the results. Okay. So it evaluates 2 plus 3, which is 5, and then prints that result to the screen. And then since this is a ln statement, okay, 
that means it's going to print the 5 and then move the cursor to the next line. Okay. And I'm going to switch over to Replit here and just show you that what that looks like real quick. Okay. So it says, welcome to our class. And then we have um, a couple of statements here. We have the print with just a 5. We have another just print statement with um, an equal sign. And then we have another print ln, if I can spell it correctly, there we go. <laughs> um, no quotations, just the 2 plus 3. Okay. Sorry, and my tabs are a little off here. Just make that all. Oopsie, look, I didn't even spell that correctly. <laughs> okay, so that's the exact same code we just had. Now, when I say the cursor, when I would talk about the cursor waiting at the end of the line, look what happens when I actually go ahead and run this program. Okay. Everything happens at once. You actually don't see the wait at all when the program is run. It just prints everything immediately that you see. And you notice how in our notes we said the cursor was ending at the at the end of the line, that's where you see this cursor right below the 5 equals 5. Okay. Awesome. Let's head back to our notes. Let's do a little bit of practice here. Um, now this is something, if you want to pause the video and practice in your own IDE, you can. Um, or if you want to just follow along, I'm going to explain what actually gets printed here. Okay. So the first line, it prints hello. And then I have an LN, meaning it'll print hello and then move to the next line and then print world. Okay. So hello world ends up being on two lines there. Okay. Hello, cursor moves, and then world. And cursor ends up being at the end of the world. Okay. Now in this case, hello gets printed and then the cursor stays after hello because it's just a print statement. And then here, world gets printed and then the LN means the cursor moves to the end after world's printed. Okay, So that's kind of the weird thing you have to get used to here. Print and print LN, the difference between them happens after that word is already printed. So hello world just gets printed directly to the council. Okay, No spaces between them because we didn't actually put a space at all between the hello worlds. Okay. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about styling here. Good style makes it easy for you and other programmers to read. So we really want to make sure that we're conforming to the style of a Java program, which means that we're aligning blocks of code, we're aligning brackets, um, and we're aligning statements just for easy readability. Okay? Java actually does ignore white space for the most part. There's a few exceptions, but for the most part, it ignores white space. Um, so tabs, new lines, all of those things that we're including in our program are purely just so we as the programmer can read them. What I mean by that, our first program could have looked like this. It could have looked like public class, open bracket, public static void main, all of this, open bracket, blah, blah, blah. And you see how everything can be on one line. Okay, it's on two lines right here, but technically we don't need all of that alignment and tabs and new um, and new lines. But it's very difficult to read. Okay, if I introduced your first program like that, it would be it would be crazy. Okay, trying to wrap your head around it, and that's why we have our style rules um, to make it easier for you as a programmer and then other programmers to read it. So here's kind of the image I like giving. Okay, We do what's called a black format when we create our classes and methods. So that big block, the public class, and then in the blank space, we would put whatever our class name is, okay? which can be anything as long as it's a capital letter. And then we have these um, open brackets, the open bracket and the closed bracket. That makes a block of the class. In that block, we have in green our main method. And again, our main method has those two blocks, okay, the open and the closed curly bracket um, to enclose that block. And in the main method, 
we have other smaller blocks of statements. And every statement, no matter how many you have, has to end in a semicolon. Okay. So visually, that's what we're trying to create when we are making our program. And then the last thing I want to talk about is two styles that it comes to blocking. Okay? And you'll see both when you, if you look online, when you look from text to text, uh, programmer to programmer, both are considered correct. It's just a matter of preference. First, we have what's called next line style. Okay? And here's our program written in next line style. Um, this is usually what the computer science exam uh, models after is next line style. The next line style, the open and the closed bracket, those curly brackets, are each on their own line. Okay? Um, so you'll see the public class example, open and closed are on their own line. And then in the main, the open and the closed bracket are on their own line. And they're aligned together. Some people like that because it just helps them visually see those blocks of code much better. So you can absolutely do next line style. The other style is called end of line style. And that's actually what I wrote in my program. And that's what I usually use in my programs. Where the open bracket is actually at the end of the line. While the closed bracket is on its own line. And to me, that just visually makes more sense in my head. Um, and I'm not using up a lot of lines of code when my programs get really long. But it's a total style decision. And um, whatever your teacher, what you want to do, um, whatever book you're reading, you'll see that it varies from uh, person to person, book to book. So it is definitely up to you. Okay. And believe it or not, that is actually our last lesson. <laughs> so, or our first lesson, but the end of our first lesson uh, called Welcome to Java. So we went over how to call system class methods to generate output. So we looked at print and print line. And then we also worked a little bit with string literals. We're going to talk more about string literals in the next lesson and some of the other things we can do with them. Okay, but that wraps up this lesson. So <laughs> thank you so much for following along and I will see you next time.